Hello, everyone. Welcome to Not at the Museum Thursday night. Thank you all so much for coming. My name is Suzanne Moes. I'm one of the curators here at the museum. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to hand the presentation over to Phil immediately so he can do his Thanksgiving address. And then I'll be back in a minute too. Take it away, Phil. There you go. Ani Danze. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to start off to give a little acknowledgement, not a little acknowledgement, but acknowledge, acknowledgement to creation, to our creator. We'll share a little bit of language and the rest in English so that you can understand what it is that we speak to when we offer our thanks to creator. Give greetings, love, and understanding to the peoples of Mother Earth, to the streams and the lakes and the pools, to the corn and the fruits and the medicines, to the trees and the forest for their usefulness, to the animals that provide us with pelts for clothing and sustenance of food, the great winds and the lesser ones to our eldest brother the sun to our grandmother the moon to all the celestial bodies in the sky to the messengers of creator who reveal the wishes to us and to the creator who is the source and ruler of health and life Donito. Thank you, Phil. Now I'd like to just take a minute and offer the land acknowledgement on behalf of the museum. The Niagara region of Ontario is located on the traditional shared territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Chinatan peoples. The Chinatan people have called these lands home for thousands of years, and more recently, the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee have been sharing the land as one dish, one spoon, treaty territory. Um, and I'm going to just take another extra minute and introduce Phil. Phil is an established local musician of Haudenosaunee descent who partakes in traditional Haudenosaunee songs, is a powwow and Cree round dance singer and co-founder of the band Old Child. Phil has been an active member in the Fort Erie Friendship Center since childhood and, worked, and works towards building a sustainable future for youth in his community. Phil is a volunteer counselor for the Indigenous Justice Diversion Program and sits on the advisory council. As part of the Justice Sharing Table Group, he helps to oversee the challenges and complexities associated with Indigenous court proceedings. He has also been involved in working towards having the Niagara region designated as a UNESCO geopark. He's had the good fortune of traveling throughout his country, learning Indigenous ways and life of his Indigenous brothers and sisters around the world. So with those words being said, I'm gonna hand it back over to you, Phil, to begin our evening of the power of music. All right, thank you for that. Well, hello everybody, I'm uh, very glad to be here with everybody. I know it's a, it's a hard time for a lot of us and uh, I'll, just, I'll just send send my love and goodwill out to everybody to help us all deal with the news and the coming news as the truth becomes, as the truth surfaces, I guess. You know, at, at, towards the end, I, I, I will offer a song to help, hopefully help those who could use a little help standing up right now or just you know just somewhere to put our energy for a few minutes and bring ourselves together as one to ask for guidance and assistance in trying to trying to journey through this together that's that's to me that's how we're all going to get through this is by doing it together so i just wanted to touch on the 
on, on, on the news a little bit and we'll, we'll come back to that for sure. So. so my name is Phil Davis, I'm 58 years old. I've been around music my whole life. We shared with, from my, from my mother who's passed on now that my dad used to play uh, music for me while I was still uh, with my mother prior to being born. And uh, I come to find out later that, you know, that they're, we're, ab we're actually able to perceive that from a very young age prior to conception. Music for myself is the greatest thing, greatest gift that Creator gave to us. It's it's a replication of of everything in creation. At an atomic level, everything vibrates. Therefore, it has a sound. Anything that we're experiencing right now, in, in behind my screen, around you. You know, everything is vibrating, giving off a tone, just as we do as human beings. We give off distinct tones. We have so many bones in our bodies. We have our arteries, our central nervous system. It all gives off a different frequency. This frequency, this overall frequency that we all carry, you know, for myself, kind of explains a little bit about about uh, why we don't like somebody's voice or why certain sounds don't appeal to us. And just I could just say like nails on a chalkboard and just makes some people, you know, it, it sends shivers down their spine because of the of the of the frequency of that sound. We're all, I don't know. Have a have a key signature. And that's why some of the sounds don't resonate with us so well. That's why the piece of people's voices don't resonate with us so well. I spent a lot of time looking at looking at music and power of music, the power of sound, really, how it affects us as, as human beings. Why do we have such a capacity to have this amazing FM station booting around in our heads 24 seven at our beckoning? We can think of any song, sing it out loud or hum it, make ourselves feel good, you know, bring ourselves up in energy, whatever reason for, or just, just to be constantly singing. You know, we, we have this capacity to remember music like more than anything else. I asked you to do, you know, some math equation from grade 11. We'd have to think about it. We'd have to go look it up. We wouldn't just, you know, most of the population wouldn't be able to remember that. There's, a, there's something about music that's always fascinated me beyond the beauty of it being shared or engaging in it. Having the having been fortunate enough to travel around powwows for almost 20 years, to play in bands, to, to sing our traditional our traditional Haudenosaunee songs with so many, so many of our great singers, you know, learning Cree round dance songs. You know, there, there's something fascinating about how that affects me. That's why I'm drawn to it. There's something about it that that inspires me by just listening to it. I was studying in university to look at uh, a different subject. I was looking at uh, conflict in native communities trying to understand that better for myself way back when. And I came across a gentleman by the name of Doug Day Alford who wrote a book called Peace, Power and Righteousness. And in this book, he talked about 
the inspiration for wanting to write the book that he was writing on came from songs of our condolence ceremonies. And that just floored me. Absolutely floored me that music again had the power over another human being to pursue something that probably took them years to do. You know, the songs of, of condolence ceremony is for when she's become ordained called, called condolence ceremonies because they're now gonna leave this life prior to being ordained has to be left behind them because now they're gonna give themselves to the community. So this piece of who they were growing up to this time, this point in time, you know, that's what that's what it's for. And, and that to me, that was pretty amazing that this gentleman put this in the book. And I started delving into the power of music. Why, why, why do we as human beings worldwide are able to have conversations for hours on time at a time, which I've done, I don't know how many times in my life, start talking to people about songs, start talking about music, talk about the music you listened to in high school or some event in your life 30 years ago. You'll remember all the details around what was going on based on the song you were listening to. There was nothing else that seems to trigger our memories better. Coming to understand, oops, coming to understand for myself through research that everything being vibrational, everything giving off tone, that somehow our ancestors, no matter where you come from in the world, our ancestors had a better understanding or knowledge base of sound and how to apply it into our daily lives. It was mentioned to people, why is it that the one thing that was left for us as indigenous people were the songs? That was the thing that was given to the younger generations to, to keep, to keep our ways going forward. We're so much tied into what happens around these songs, what's tied to these songs, songs that are rites of passage, songs that are for community purposes, you know, you know everything that you can think of from birth to rebirth, there, there, there's a song for. Well, it doesn't matter where you come from on the planet, if you look back far enough, you'll probably find that out for yourself too. There used to be songs for when a child was born, for when a child you know, made their first steps to young adult, all those rites of passages, there's, there's always songs, there's always community events for that. And songs that I know of, I've asked questions about, and there are some of them out there, nobody remembers where they came from. To me, that's just fascinating to know that it's been around that that long that nobody can pinpoint the originator of that song. But yet, yeah, the, the song is still being carried forward, and probably not sung exactly the same way. But you know, the the the, the, the gist of the knowledge of the song is shared forward. What type of song it is, we have all of that in in our in our musics is songs are for different reasons <laughs> and there's a knowledge base that goes with them just like just like contemporary music today there's a story in there there's a there's a history with the person who wrote it all those same types of tidbits of information i've, I've always wondered what it was with with songs, especially in so you say say a healing sense. 
every community had somebody who was a medicine person. And a medicine person would be help you would help you alleviate that dis-ease, the illness, that sickness that you're feeling as a human being. And when a ceremony is done, there is a song that is sung. To me, if if concoctions of of medicines, plants, roots are on this, on this side, and the balance of that is is the song using the two natural elements that we have. And the songs are always, always different. They're never there's never one healing song for one nation. There's one the way I understand. It, there's 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 the songs are are individual. That medicine person will know something about you and something about your family. Probably watched you grow up way back when, and saw you in your everyday life. Knew who you were in general as a person. And it had a little bit of a hint of, you know, what that, what that dis-ease is, was that you were experiencing at that time. And so that song would help balance out, balance out uh, those energies within ourselves. That sound healing would happen. It was almost like they knew what notes had to be adjusted in and reset or, or whatever, or by singing that song or partaking in it helped something biologically within all of us. We have, we have forgotten so much. And so much knowledge that's been lost, forgotten, dropped along the ways. Language is an example of that, I know, Nishnabe speaker, Mr. James Chauna shared a long time ago that they're they're reinventing the language because there's certain there's words that don't exist that explain the way waters and clouds move as an example. So they have to come up with these new terms and ideals for for creating words. To me, that's an example of that lost lost knowledge. That, that doesn't exist for us anymore. That doesn't mean we're not going to find it again. I just want to I just want to say too, if there's anybody who wants to ask a question, there'll be times for that. Or if you'd like to share in a tidbit of information, that's great too. I'm just I'm just going to ramble on with with my thoughts on on, on the subject. I've uh, been kind of a tough day. You know, thinking, thinking about all the news and everything, you know, and what I think about is how much I miss being around our musics, around our socials and our powwows, and singing the uh, singing round dance songs, playing with the guys in a band, or going out to watch music somewhere else. How much that makes me feel whole being around music. Especially with the the news of of today, that that added grief on top of that music for me is 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 what I perpetuate to to help with this inside. It helps me it helps me stay focused. It helps me stay positive as much as I possibly can. So I don't try to force myself not to. I don't try to force myself to heal. I, I go through my emotions, but at some point, you know, I need to alleviate those somehow. So I'll pick up a drum or I'll pick up a guitar, sing a song, and, and try to try to try to balance out the emotions so it doesn't get too heavy for myself so that because I have to continue on doing what I'm doing as a human being. Well, songs 
in our community settings goes all the way back to as far as, you know, what societies were first brought together. Well, everything I'm speaking to you is stuff that I've researched for myself too. And I'm sorry if I can't remember all of the all of the references. If you need to know, send me send me some of the chat, and I'll and I'll try to remember them, and the names and the references. But there was um, Daniel Levitin at the University of McGill. That's his name. He uh, wrote a book called "This Is Your Brain on Music," and he wrote uh, "The World in Six Songs." This is your brain on music. Talks about the effects of music on us biologically. The world in six songs talks about how music was used to help form stronger, better societies. Music was key and central and is key and central to creating strong community. The songs that he spoke about in the book or the six songs talked about different elements of our, of our human nature, like friendship and love, you know, good times, bad times, all of those simple subjects that songs were created for in societies and they would have been sung by individuals who had the capacity to create music. And he suggests that these individuals, because of their ability to share on a more emotional level, were, were sought after to be better mates. It wasn't mad the man of his man or woman, but they were sought after to be better mates to create, you know somebody who are or just somebody that had more capacity and this went on and on and on and society as societies grew everybody in society had some type of capacity for music I know and I know in our ways as Haudenosaunee people as an example that it used to be if somebody over in this nation had uh, somebody who passed and somebody from this part of the nation would take over their daily responsibilities so they could grieve for 10 days and somebody else would look after getting ready, getting ready and helping out with what needed to be done to help the family prepare and do all the work for them during those 10 days. And then somebody from another nation will come and sing the songs so that everybody from that nation could do what they needed to do for 10 days. So everybody shared in the responsibility of carrying the song base, which is kind of amazing to know that so many of us had these communal songs that was just for grief. It was just in our time of grief. What other, you know, what other type of, what other type of uh, songs that would have existed? Of course, would have been the rites of passage and all of that too. Uh, I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'm, like I said, I'm kind of a little. I think you are making sense, Bill. I have a, a question in the chat from oh, okay. Mark. Um, he wants to know, are the songs for healing different from other songs? For instance, are they quieter, slower, or sung in a different scale? Or would the main distinguishing feature just be in the words? I know for for, for Paolo, there are they're... The request for healing songs that are done by certain dancers. When I was talking about from from a communal sense and a medicine person, that song would have been personalized to you. That song would be probably would have been sung in a tone that would 
help you find harmony with yourself. The the as we said, the, the medicine person would have saw that what was kind of that little hint of what what, what that imbalance was, the disease within the self mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and talking, and had the capacity to help you help yourself. Hope that helps. Sorry, he's just sitting there checking the chat there. Yeah, so songs, music, words, all those things that we remember, especially in today's age, if I was to ask you how many songs do you know off the top of your head, how many songs are booted around your FM, on your FM station. You know, it, it's amazing and it's worldwide too. You know, worldwide, you, you, you go to a hockey game, you, you watch, I've never been to a, uh, European football game, but the songs that they share in the stadium is absolutely amazing. You know, we'll have the chance, and then both both sides will start singing together. And isn't it isn't it amazing how we think that we can't sing, that our voice is out of tune or whatever, and then that may be the case. If you got one person to sing, you know, they may sing out of tune, but if everybody sings together, it always sounds great because you have all of these different frequencies, uh, all these different key signatures going off at once and they almost come out, come across so wonderfully. You know, it sounds, it sounds it's pretty magical to watch our, our communal, communal music at work, I guess is the best way to, best way to phrase it. I know from playing in the band, I so much enjoy playing with, with all seven, eight of us, that we've had on stage and it's amazing how much or how good it feels to be intertwined in all of them frequencies that are going on on stage at, at one time it's very it's very very soothing it's very uh you know it's very fulfilling when we're done when we're done playing after after playing for an hour or so, you know, it, it's, it's, you feel energized. It's, it's just an amazing, amazing feeling. Somebody else chatting here. I, uh, well, the question in the um, chat right now is how are yeah. songs being preserved for future generations? Books or recordings? Well, because of technology, there are a lot of songs that are shared from different traditional groups, uh, but the songs that are meaningful to us as nations, those songs are never recorded. They're still, they're still passed down traditionally, orally, just, have, just as they always have been. You know, they've survived for thousands and thousands of years being passed down orally. Um, like I said before, there's a knowledge base that goes with that too. There, there, there are community singers, I like to say for us who, who, who sing traditional music, well, community singers, we sing for the people. That's why I say community singers. Um, knowing the meaning behind songs is more important than knowing a song. Getting permission to use that song is hugely important to us. Getting to sit with somebody who's sang these songs and had them passed down from older ones in their generation and had them passed down from the older ones in their generation. You know, there's so much involved with it. Just just to just to go out and sing for the peoples. You know, especially for us from Haudenosaunee, we have to have somebody get up and introduce the songs, speak it in the language. And that's always that's always put out there before the songs are even done. So I'm going to get up and announce the songs, the set of songs that are going to be shared now. And they'll be shared and the dancers will get up and dance. And when after that set is done, then there'll be an announcement for the next set of songs. And so the knowledge base 
with our songs is is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm amazed, especially the younger people nowadays. When we started doing powwow back in the early 2000s, we would go to powwow. There'd be maybe, I went to a powwow, there's only us singing or two drums. And that's unheard of now because everywhere you go, there's these young people everywhere. And they know all the songs they know. For powwow, there's different songs that you have to know. You know, you're asked to do a song. I think there was like 40, 50 different types of songs that you could have asked to sing and, and you know, mall, know the histories of the songs and sit around and talk about it. This is absolutely amazing knowledge that goes along with, with the songs. How they're supposed to be done, you know, is, is another important thing. You have a couple more questions? We do. Um, in Canadian history, music and ceremony were once banned. Can you speak to the history and the role of music and it, how it's um, played in the process of decolonizing and healing Indigenous people directly. Well, like I said earlier, that's exactly why I came to that conclusion of, isn't it crazy that all the things our ancestors could have saved for us, it was the songs, their knowledge base, their knowledge, their general knowledge, is way beyond the knowledge that we have today. Their knowledge to use it in community set, um, community settings, into into communicating probably with with each other, probably communicating with nature. It would have it would have solidified our connection to creation, and therefore solidified our connection to Creator. That everything that's been taught to us is, is, is true. In, in our in our ways of life that 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 uh, we were given our original instructions as we say uh, our music today still 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 sustain us still feed us that energy still in, instills that pride for our peoples and our love of our peoples and for me it doesn't matter we are brothers and sisters. I know that our ancestors all got along in the past. That's evident because there's so many of our nations. There's not just 10. There's so many different nations of our peoples that existed for thousands and thousands of years on this continent. And that means that they lived in peace and harmony with each other. In my, in my view, you know, you know, they would have sat down and they would have talked talked about what peace looks like. How are how we going to maintain that with each other? That's evident amongst, amongst our people of the Haudenosaunee. There were six nations. And well, prior to that, there was prior to the mid-1700s, there were five. But there must have been some. Just, just to sit back and think about how long they must have talked in order to come up with deciding you know, what the Thanksgiving address was going to be like, how to carry that forward, how to carry the songs forward, all those different aspects of our of our different nations right across. You know, there was no sense of time back then. There was no Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, there was no there was no directions. There was no north, south, east, west. There was. There was the existence that we had with the natural world, and that's that was the example we followed. You know, our concept of time is 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 so skewed today than what it must have been like way back then, because back then our, our attachment to sound would have been so much different. The world would have been a lot quieter. I was I was told that way back when you could hear Niagara Falls from Hamilton when the weather conditions were right. You could hear the roar of Niagara Falls that far away. And that's not hard to imagine. Well, I was, I was uh, unfortunately, like during uh, September 11th, the event of se September 11th when everything shut down, I was asked to help keep fire at the Niagara Regional Native Center and stayed there for uh, four nights 
And it was amazing how quiet it is around here. And you could hear, you could, I could hear the, I could hear the falls because there was no vehicles anywhere. There was no planes and helicopters going over. You know, so, so our perception of sound of time and all that was so much different. And I believe that's why the knowledge base was so grand in ways that we can't, hopefully we can get back there to, to understanding our, our, our relationship to sound, which is part of the universe as well, part of creation. We have a question here from Mark. Are songs taught one-on-one -on -one or in small groups or from hearing them performed in powwows? And traditionally, how often would music be performed? Well, for myself, I was, I've been around our, 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 our songs, Hosnan Show Me, for a long time. I was marveled at, at the men performing them and sat back and listened to them, a group of eight to, eight to 12 men, usually. And from <clears throat> actively participating, started in 2000, we started out as a small group at the Niagara Regional Native Center. And there was one, two, three, there's about five or six of us to start with. And as the word spread into the community, well, more men kept coming out. And that's where the knowledge of the songs was shared um, showing, showing, showing what, how, how to, how to, how to use the drum to sing, or, or even with, you know, being shown how to, with, with the, us as Hudson showing you have the water drum and rattles, so being shown how to use the water drum, or even use the rattles to stay in time, follow the, follow the, uh, the lead singer on, on the uh, water drum with your rattle. Uh, on the Powell drum, whoever the lead singer was in the group, he would, he would just follow his drumstick, you know, and, and there were certain parts and it would all, it all came together as from participating openly, sharing songs one-on-one, -on -one, you know, that's, that's, you develop friendships and you, and you get to that point where you feel comfortable sharing songs with individuals and, and just like, just like today, when we sit around and, you know, play music it's the same thing you get to that level of comfortness where you like sharing sharing your songs with each other or and for us it's ask, asking permission to be able to use songs that are they're very moving they're very moving to us you know, songs that that touch our heart you know, well we've asked to use those because we want to also have the have the knowledge base that goes with that song what was that song for that song was very powerful you know, can uh, we ask you, do we, I've done it before and asked like, what was that song about? And asked, asked for a meaning behind the song and it was gladly shared. Well, and then asking for permission to use it and said, by all, by all means, nobody's ever said no. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a great compliment to be asked to for somebody if they could use your song. You know, it's very, very humbling very humbling experience. You know, coming, going to powwows for so many years, seeing so many wonderful things transpire on, on, on human connection is very prevalent what I'm talking about. You know, people getting together in, in a community spirit for the sake of celebrating life. That's what powwows are for, the, their celebration of life. And the time to come together and, and share share the songs, share the dances, you know, just to be amongst each other, uh, share stories, support each other. Whatever it is that needs to be done does does happen in Powell's. I've seen so much of it. Hmm. Is that another question? Nope. Well, yeah, I kind of have one, Bill. Yeah. And it, it sort of speaks to the, your band, Old Child. Um, mm -hmm. Do you see a lot of overlapping and borrowing from your indigenous music heritage into today's sort of modern, more modern music? I know that you guys play sort of a blues and a jazz and a funk. Yeah. Well, with the with the with the movie Rumble, I don't know if you saw the movie Rumble, but they're they're talking about how our 
our music from indigenous brothers and sisters helped inspire blues music. So, so if that's so, then how did it do it? To me, it would have been the, the scale pattern, the four four downbeat of, of, of our songs. I think that's why I know so many indigenous people just love the blues of the country. Country blues, you know, it, it, it's it's very reminiscent of our traditional song base. Whether you know our traditional song base or not, too, which is another thing. You know, we all have we all have blood blood memory, uh, cellular memory is what modern science calls it. There's memories that are passed down from generation to generation. You know, and I, I believe that's why we're all drawn towards towards the blues, towards country. It's massive in in, in indigenous country. The people that listen to the blues and listen to the country as, as a as a base for listening pleasure. I know myself that when I discovered the blues, it felt so good. It still does today. And you could hear the storytelling that was going on in there. You know, you could you could hear the you could hear the beat, beat of that drum in there. And it just felt like home. Like home to, for me, for myself anyways. You know, I think and then also the, the the type of singing, the field hollering, you know, kind of kind of lends kind of lends towards our style of singing too, right? Because we're always singing loud and proud because we're singing we're, we're singing we're, it's a form of prayer, I guess is a better way to put it. You know, we're singing to be celebrating our life and be happy and thankful for our life. That's why we that's why we sing with everything that we have, right? And, Field hollering was was that way too, but field hollering from from our our, our uh, African brothers and sisters was done to 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 disguise their lyrics so that so that their enslavers wouldn't know what they were talking about, but the whole rest of the uh, of the uh, of the plantation knew. What they were doing, what what they were talking about, but the but the uh, slavers didn't have a clue. You know, they didn't understand the music or anything. Uh, there was some form of gibberish or something. You know, and also, you know, they said that when when people at the plantation would have their big shindigs and their big parties, and I guess they went on for a length of time. And so nobody was really watching anybody else, and and our African brothers and sisters would not come to where we were. They were uh, to where we were on our on our reserves back then, or in villages, in villages, and just come and be accepted there and, and hang out. And of course, you come and hang out with somebody long enough, and then and somebody starts singing music, singing songs, and then the exchange goes on. And of course. Of course, so uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna be inspired by it, and you're going to pick up on pick up on uh, on the patterns that are being shared uh, on the timbres of the voice and all of that. You know, to me, that's that's quite amazing, and it sounds like it's pretty darn true. You know, that makes total sense sense to me. That did it happen? I think so. I think so, and our our stamp on on blues music, you know, is is yet to yet to come fully into truth. And we have so many talented peoples in our communities that participate in musics. And we have so many great musicians, even people who are famous of some mixed mixed blood. Robbie Robertson, of course, is one. He's from Six Nation and, and Jewish. Jimi Hendrix, Jackson Brown, uh, Jesse Ed Davis, who's not really known. He's mentioned in the Rumble movie, but he was a huge inspiration on a lot of the uh, 70s guitarists. 
guitar gods, I guess is the best way to put it. His style of playing, his approach to playing uh, music is just, um, we have our own, we have our own music awards show. You know, we have the Native American Music Awards in, in the, on the other side of the border. Over here in the Manitowapi, we used to have the Canadian Aboriginal Music Awards. But there's so many people out there who are Indigenous and have contributed a lot to to music of today. Phil, you've got lots and lots of thanks and good wishes coming in from the chat. Um, okay. And thanks for joining us, particularly on this difficult day. Mm -hmm. I have a question, though. Um, mm -hmm. Are, are are there one or two songs at powwow that really impact you a little more than others and, and why the grand entry grand entry always to see everybody come together in that community setting everybody standing up in attendance whether you're a drummer or singer all the dancers coming in procession is one you know, from from powwow, that's 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 always been absolutely like amazing to me to watch to watch that unity in motion of, of, of everybody that's there from the community and communities, you know, everybody moving in sync with each other and then coming to join in at some point with one of the other songs. But seeing all of that done, seeing all the all of the hard work that goes into a dancer preparing with their regalia and everything. And for us as, as Haudenosaunee, I always enjoy our, uh, I always enjoy watching the smoke dancers. It doesn't matter what song it is because it's such a high tempo, watching them uh, dance is always, it always brings a smile to my face. You're just thinking about it. it, brings a smile to my face to watch watch the younger ones and the older ones get out there and participate and you know kind of kind of show off kind of show their skills but also you know for the sake of for the love of love of the uh, love of our musics uh, I don't uh, almost all round dance songs too there's there's so many good ones there's just there's so many there's, it's hard to put a finger on that one because there's so many. I guess anything by Harvey Drever, his name is, he's, a, he's an amazing singer. He's an absolutely amazing singer. Every time I hear him sing it, like it just, just kind of warms your whole being over. And it's such a, this brilliant, brilliant voice. It sounds like a traditional flute when he sings. It's crazy. It's crazy good. You know, being, being moved by music you know, for us as human beings, being moved by that, that does something to us biologically, releases fluids into our system that, that creates that, that uh, relaxed feeling. That almost uh, Some songs almost put you into a uh, trance-like state. You know, we all have those songs that we, gravitate to when we want to just kind of take the edge off the day or, or whatever it is, right? You know, music does have that ability on us. And the more that I try to understand about music and how it affects us and my human beings, the more I'm fascinated by it. Songs of, especially with songs of healing, like there are, there are, there is, research that was done by Dr. Elizabeth Muggenthaler on why cats purr. And what they found, what she, what she concluded was that they were healing themselves through vibrations. Or they were actually keeping themselves also in good physical condition. Because of the cat sits around all day, laying on the back of the couch, doesn't do a dang thing. But then the fly goes by and it can jump up in the air and catch the fly. Like, How's that possible? I lay around the couch all day. I can barely make it off, <laughs> off the couch without moaning and groaning. And you know, there's no spring. There's no spring going on in that whatsoever. 
but that's what she concluded, like, like especially what they did. They did studies on uh, injured cats who and found that the purring was much, much deeper, much longer. You know, just all those, all those vibrations were helping keeping everything in good working order. And communication amongst animals, elephants can communicate from one side of the forest through their low, low uh, frequency grunts or glottal exchanges, whatever you want to say, but the, the, the low frequencies travel around objects. So that's why they can communicate through the forest. There's so much, there's so much, it's just not enough time to, not enough time to uh, get into all of it. And I was hoping that, you know, I'm glad for the questions and, and I'm really glad that everybody came, came out to, came out to listen in and, and share your thoughts and, and be inquisitive. And I hope but it kind of makes you think about your, your own song base or your own, your own uh, relationship to music, relationship to sound. It's nature that, that inspires our traditional songs, from what I was told. You know, we, we, we look to nature to teach us in the, song, the sounds of the birds in the morning. Well, those are some of the most soothing sounds that there are on the planet. People waking up early prior to sunrise and they're already awake, greeting the day. There's so many different sounds from nature that that are truly, truly pleasant and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> we, uh, we need to we need to move back to understanding that better for ourselves to help help ourselves so that we can help others. Well, I think I'm gonna just share a song. And this will be a song in powwow style. I'm gonna be singing it on a hand drum. And it's a song I made a long time ago. Sitting with my son. I just kind of the whole thing all the time came to me at once and, and I like to I like to sing it for like times for like this to to help us uh they come to terms with ourselves or come to terms with with external influences like with the news today. So, so I'd like to sing a bit of that before to end off the evening. Unless there's another question too, I'll gladly take another question prior to that. But no, if not, that's okay. Um, thank you all for coming and joining in. I wish I was, wish we had more time, but We'll, we'll do this more again in person too. You know, I look forward to when we can get back to having music present in our lives we know now from what we've experienced over the last while, how important it really is to us. The value, the true value that music has for us as human beings. So, yeah, we'll, Yeah, 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 yeah. 
very much for coming and joining and hanging out with my mother. Thank you so much, Bill. I really appreciate you coming out. You made me think about sound and not just music, but sound in a different way. My connection to the sound of water. I thank you for that. And on behalf of the museum, like I said, we really appreciate you sharing your stories and your thoughts and your time with us. And I hope to see you again real soon for one of the big Phil Davis hugs. Looking forward to seeing everybody too. It's just, it's, it's, music does help with that too. It's yep. been it's like through this, music's been something pretty awesome to have around for ourselves just to turn it on and you know, fill, fill, fill the air and help fill some of that void inside that we all feel. Well, I look forward to it in person again. All right. All right. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Take care. See you.